Hello, my lovelies. My name's Gilbert Dorvalian, and the plan for today is to make the hose for Aziraphale. If you didn't tune in last time, I patterned and mocked up the hose then, so I'm going into this with a pattern that doesn't need any adjusting, but I used the Tudor Tailor as my main reference for this. The hose are the last part of his underclothes, and in the show are white, which is not only perfectly appropriate for the period, they're also a perfectly appropriate colour for an angel. In the Tudor period, hose were mostly made of wool, with some high-class pairs being made of silk, perhaps with a linen pair underneath to protect it. I really struggled to find wool in the right weight and quality, so in the end I went for a linen viscose blend, which isn't entirely age-appropriate, but it was the fabric that I found that I was happiest with and that I felt happiest wearing. It's an absolutely beautiful fabric and was a pleasure to work with, so despite the fact that it's not 100% accurate, I really don't have any regrets about it. But with that said, let's get on to showing you how they were made. Before I started, I found the true bias of my fabric, so I could make sure that my hose were cut out as close to it as I could manage. With that done, I could line my pattern piece from my mock-up on it to cut my pieces. Then it was on to snippy snippy time, although with much less cutting anxiety than normal. Hooray for mock-ups! I should add that when cutting on the bias, cutting two at the same time isn't exactly best practice, as you don't know if the backside is out of alignment, but I went for it anyway. I unpicked the mock-up to do this, so I needed to measure the one and a half centimetre seam allowance back in using a watercolour pencil because I wasn't happy with how much a lead pencil showed through and this will wash out. The first thing to sew is the long leg seams from the waistline to the ankle using a backstitch. As I mentioned last time, if you are sewing by machine to allow the bias to stretch, these should be sewn with a zigzag stitch. But as with everything else in this project I was working by hand, I used a back stitch as I did for all of the seams on this. Once both legs were sewn, I pressed them open and then trimmed the seam allowance back on one side for felling, making sure that the felling on both legs would face the same way. Then, to fell, the longer side was folded over the shorter and sewn with a careful whip stitch. By taking only a thread from the outside layer, your felling should be fairly invisible when worn. And then it was onto the feet. Lining up the midpoint on the heel with the already sewn seam and the middle of the sole with the middle of the foot, I pinned them in place. I cut the soles with a bit of extra fabric, so I tacked these in place on the sew line first. Double checked they were in place by trying them on, then tacked them for a second time a little further out so that I wouldn't have to unpick my tacking from under a back stitch, which is never fun. This also meant that I could double check that I had the correct sole on each foot, as obviously I wanted the curve to match my insole, and while it is possible to check with pins in, 
that's also a great way to end up treading on pins. Once they were sewn, I pressed and felled them too. I decided to fell them upwards rather than hiding the felling under the foot so it wouldn't be under my feet and hopefully be less bulky and annoying there. But again, the main point is that on both feet, the felling is going in the same direction. Now that I have two complete hoes, it's time to turn them into a pair of hoes. One of them was turned the right way out and placed inside the other one, allowing me to line up, pin, and then finally tack the crotch seam. This was sewn with another back stitch from the back to what on a modern pair of trousers would be the fly and pressed open, along with the seam allowance on the opening. Because of the opening, I felled each side of this seam individually, so that once the waistband was in, I would be able to carry on over the top of it. At this point, I took a break to pattern the waistband as I hadn't bothered to during the initial patterning process. Using the mock-up and a piece of calico on the straight grain to help stop the waist from losing shape, I drafted a piece for the Tudor tailor as a reference. The first step was to trace along the waist, down to the front of the opening, and then to remove the seam allowance. Along the waist, I then drew a band one and a half inches wide, and added an inch or so at the end to make sure there was extra where they would be joined. For the opening side, I copied out the shape in the book and added seam allowance to it as well, and then cut two copies. With that patterned and cut out, I could pin it into the waistband, following the line of the seam allowance. and then pin, sew, trim, and press the back seam. Which, as smart as ever, I managed to do on the wrong side, so I then got to remove it, repin it, and then tack it into place. Then I folded the seam allowance under, clipping where necessary. This is only a single fold as it will be against the outside layer protecting the raw edge. You could fell this into place along the outside layer if you want to make sure that it won't move or turn up, but I opted to use a running stitch instead, trusting the points to keep it in place. And then it's time for the last piece of felling around the entire waistband. First I folded and pinned the fabric into place,
and then started felling the waistband to the waistband piece. There isn't any need to be delicate with the stitches here as they aren't catching the outside fabric at any point, just the folded in seam allowance and the waistband piece. And then the final step is points. These are just eyelets, and I didn't actually do all of them, as most of them are designed to line up with the doublet, so I'll do them when I have the doublet to line up. They're made using an owl to open up the fabric and then stitched open. I did a pair at the back, and the ones down the opening so that I could close it, and will eventually make a finger loop braid for that purpose. And with all of that done, this quick distraction from the trunk hose and easy win was done. All in all, they took under two weeks from the duct tape model through to finishing everything. But there were several months between the duct tape model and the finishing of everything due to certain current events, which meant that I couldn't go out and buy fabric. The sewing itself, I didn't time exactly, but it didn't take particularly long under a week and not full days either, so I'm gonna say it was something between 12 and 24 hours. Like the shirt, these are a really great place to start with hand sewing, especially if you're already confident with your patterning and your fitting and you really just want to migrate onto hand sewing. As I said in the last video, aside from the feet, I'm really happy with how these turned out. You can see where the lack of a gusset affects the fit over the ankle, but once the shoes are on, this will be hidden and that was part of the reason that I was ready just to let it go. I could have also made a cod piece for them, but I want to do a little bit more research on that first, so if I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that separately. My question for you today is, last time you were doing a big project and started to lose motivation, what did you do to help keep that motivation up? For me, these were an easy win after the long slog of several months of hand sewing on the trunk hose, and they worked like a charm because immediately afterwards I went and did another big chunk of sewing on the trunk hose. Thank you for watching through to the end, and thank you as well to all of my lovely subscribers. You guys are really appreciated. I love reading your comments and seeing everything that you leave on these videos. If you did like this video and you found it helpful or informative, please think about giving me a like and subscribing if you're not already for more sewing and costume related content. Stay safe, stay sensible, and I shall see you soon. Bye. I mean, that's why I had to take a break from doing the trunk hose. I realized I was getting burnt out on it. And then I also realized that I'd been working on it for over 600 hours, so. Very on YouTube, on hold. <laughs> and now you know why there's been so much filler on my channel lately. It's because the everlasting project is everlasting. Tours, tours.